Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm David Pollard. Today we look at some of the more attention-grabbing developments in AI this week and what they mean for the sector with our guest Ethan Devitt, Chief Investment Officer at London CIV. A new super-fast chip from NVIDIA, a possible Apple-Google-Gemini partnership and a welcome to the S&P 500 for super microcomputer. It has been a headline-heavy week for AI, but when investors look back in months to come, could it prove to be a pivotal one for the sector's direction and prospects? The stakes, of course, already high with NVIDIA at the spearhead of a determined drive upwards in tech valuations. But that too meaning there could be a long way down if expectations for the sector are disappointed. London CIV's Ethan Devitt is with me. Welcome, Ethan. Many thanks for joining us today. If you had to pick one thing from this very dramatic week for the sector to focus on, what would it be? I would say it's the maturing of the sector and the fact that we are in an arms race, but now we're starting to get to a more complex level of that arms race. We've hit, had what they call the Woodstock of AI, NVIDIA-led, and a lot of the discussions around this new chip and around just really evidencing just how much ahead of their peers they are, what that first mover advantage means. Now, after an announcement like that, even they had a little bit of a pullback, but it really does start to bring into focus that they're quite far ahead and whether other competitors can even hope to compete. But we're also looking at the, uh, the, the potential, and we'll talk about this later, around a bubble. And we'll talk about NVIDIA a little more in a moment. But first of all, Alphabet has been very much in the news this week on news that it might be sharing its Gemini AI engine with Apple to put into Apple iPhones. How significant would that be for this sector? That would be very significant because we're seeing two potential competitors in some areas around mobile phones you know, get together to, to really divide and conquer when it comes to, um, to the AI movement. Um, this is, again, as I mentioned, an arms race. So it's a question of not only showing progress, but throwing money at the problem, evidencing progress, crowing about it, and then, um, and, and then moving forward. So I think it is quite significant to see that we're seeing erstwhile competitors put their differences aside to really just build presence. Supermicro Computer joined the S&P 500 this week and is offering up to 2 million new shares. It has benefited very much from its close ties with Nvidia, but there has been a bit of a mixed reaction in its share price this week. Do you think there's some uncertainty around that particular aspect of the sector? Um, I'd say that what I say I'm seeing this week is more perhaps a correction given the, the very large run-up we've seen on this. They've definitely been swept along by the Nvidia hype and momentum. And equally, technical factors such as around just issuance and how that affects demand and perhaps a little bit of um, less conviction in that. So I don't see anything particularly fundamental. If anything, the fundamentals for that stock are stronger than ever. What I do see, though, is that there's starting to be that discrimination by investors, a little bit of, little bit of perhaps concern around this froth. And again, based on who the winners and losers are going to be, just trying to discern that for themselves. Well, on that note, of course, the big beast of the sector is NVIDIA. And this new Blackwell platform is said to offer speeds of up to 30 times its predecessor. But is there a danger that investors are actually really building in too many expectations into an already very highly valued sector? Well, this is, is a, 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 an issue for sure now. I'd say going back to when NVIDIA is kind of the, the, was the linchpin of all of this the excitement in this particular quarter, their announcements around this tipping point they were seeing in AI, their very strong conviction around ongoing demand, and their comment in those releases around the shift uh, into, well, first of all, data centers were clearly the, the lion's share of that growth, but also the shift not just into training around, but into, into, into integration that we've moved beyond. This cycle is so quick that we've moved into the integration phase. So that was a very pivotal point around, uh, around the NVIDIA results. And again, orchestrating, as, as underscoring, their, um, their, their, their leading share and their market share and their first mover advantage. Now, the cynics, the skeptics would say we're moving into bubble territory. Do you think that's a danger? Or indeed, even if it's not now, could it be a danger in six months, a year's time? It's very interesting. We've been parsing this bubble concept, whether it's just in AI stocks, whether it's across the board in all stocks, just in tech stocks, or whether it's just reflective of good fundamentals. I'd say the key difference between this and the last internet bubble is there are actually fundamentals to rely on. There are core evidence of demand. There are earnings. These are the picks and shovels behind the, the, the growth and interest in AI. It's not just the, uh, the promise of, of what it can do for companies. We see companies wanting to spend. They have pent up cash. 
it's there to spend. They want to spend it. It's almost like a security spend. How can they not spend on AI at this point? And saying they're spending on AI boosts their own fortunes. So there's that very much a virtuous cycle. And I don't think it is a bubble. I think we probably are only getting started. But we, like anything with this froth, and you highlighted earlier, we will have um, cycle. We will have moments of, of less demand and moments of volatility. It's going to be a rough ride. OK, Ethan Devitt from London CIV. Many thanks for sharing those thoughts with us today. And that is your roundup of the AI sector. I'm David Pollard. This is Reuters.